In the previous lesson, you learned how to remove personally identifiable information, or PII, like the participants' names. You also learned how to manipulate the data to provide more privacy by rounding the salaries. But there are other ways you can do this. One approach is called generalization, where you can convert values into broader categories. Another is top and bottom coding, where you cap or bound the values. To figure out what broader categories to make or where to bound the values, let's look at the salary values more closely. This histogram was generated using ggplot2. We see that there are quite a few people who make around 50,000 and a decent amount that make over 100,000. We could apply generalization or make broad categories in these splits. As for top and bottom coding, you want to apply bounds to reduce the number of people who are outliers because they will be easier to identify. For instance, there are very few people who make over 165,000 or under 50,000. You apply generalization by converting salary to a binary column. Everyone who makes less than 100,000 will be assigned zero, and others who make 100,000 or more will be assigned a one. You can accomplish this by using the mutate and if-else functions as shown here. Another approach that allows you to alter the data is top coding. We will use the mutate and if-else functions. Based on the histogram, we want to top code around 165,000. For our example, we'll top code at greater than or equal to 165,000 and call our new data set whitehouse.gen. If we use filter, we can see that 27 observations fall in this category. Before we proceed any further, let's discuss two dplyr functions that you'll be using often in this course, count and summarize at. Count can be used when you want to find the number of observations for all distinct groups in the data. For example, if you want to know the number of people in each of this category of status, you can pipe White House into count of status. Here you are counting the number of rows for each unique value in status. The result has two columns. The status column has one row for each unique category in status, and n is the number of people in each category. If you wish to count the number of people for each unique combination of status and title, you can pass both status and title to count. Note the additional argument sort equals true, which sorts the column n in descending order. Let's move on to summarize at. This function allows you to calculate summary statistics for your data by applying one or more functions to one or more variables. For example, if you want to know the sum of the salaries in the White House data set, you specify the variable salary in summarize at with bars. The function you want to apply to salary comes after the comma. If you want to apply more than one function, such as mean and standard deviation, to the salary variable, you can use funds to specify the functions you want to apply. Now, it's your turn to try these methods.